Hello and welcome to another coding challenge video. In this video, I am going to attempt to program a solar system generator, simulator, system-like thing, just like the one you see over there, in 3D. I'm going to do it in a bunch of steps, starting with 2D and moving to 3D. I'm going to use the processing development environment, which you see right here. Link to download processing will be in the description of this video. Now, you might be asking, why are you doing this? Look, you did it already. This, in fact, is one of my examples. It is called Gravitational Attraction 3D. It's one of the examples that comes with processing. This is actually doing a simulation of, of a solar system like thing with the actual formula of gravitational attraction. Uh, I will link to a video from my Nature of Code series where how to make this is explained, but I'm going to do it in a different way, which is really ultimately a lesson about transformations. Translate, rotate, push matrix, pop matrix, how those types of things work in object-oriented programming, in processing. And so I'm going to do it in a different way. And hopefully by the end of this, somewhere between 10 and 20 minute video, you're going to see how to use all that stuff and make yourself a little solar system. And you will be much more creative and interesting at doing it than I will be. And hopefully you will share what you do with me then too. Okay, I got to get started. Let's get started. So as always, I'm kind of just got a blank slate here. I should really at least enter this in beforehand, but I'm not. Uh, I'm going to add setup and I'm going to add draw and I'm going to add size. Uh, 600, 600, and space is a dark black place. So I'm going to just do use background zero. I'm going to run this code. I'm going to move this over here. Here we go. This is my outer space simulator. Do you like it? <laughs> Very few lines of code. Um, okay, now the first thing I want to do is create an object. I'm going to call it a planet. So I'm going to make a planet class, and I really think it's going to be useful here for me to use p vectors. So I'm going to create a p vector, um, yeah, 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 called position. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, have, I have to think about this while I'm doing this on the fly. I'm not so sure about this. And um, I'm going to say, um, uh, I'm going to say, when I write the constructor, yeah, the constructor is going to get an x and a y, and that position. Uh, will be a vector at that x and a y. Now, let's think about this for a second. Oh, and create vector is a function that's in p5.js. I'll just say a new p vector here. OK, I got to think about this a little bit more. I have a marker here. Let's think about this. So what I want is um, I have a planet object. And the planet object, ultimately, so let's just think, let's imagine the first planet object I'm going to make is like a sun or a star. And then I'm going to make another planet object. And what are the things I need to keep track of? So I'm not going to do proper orbital mechanics, Kepler's law stuff. This is a great topic for another video. Encourage me to do that. I would love to look into that and do that uh, more. But it's not going to be in this particular video. But what I need to keep track of is its distance, I'll call r from the planet. And it's going to rotate around in a circular orbit. So in order to use the rotate function in processing, I need to keep track of an angle. So actually, what this planet really needs is not an xy location, but a, a radius and an angle, or really a pole. This is the idea of a polar coordinate, by the way. So instead of xy, a radius and an angle. And you know what? Forget about this p vector stuff. I was really thinking along the lines of my force space simulation, which I do have other videos that you could look into. And I think what I'm going to do in this planet is give it a radius and an angle. And so just to start, we can fill it with radius. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. The radius equals r. And the angle always, let's just say it always starts at 0, or it could be a random angle, that sort of thing. So I definitely need to have a function to draw this. And what I'm going to do to draw it is just draw an ellipse at 0, 0. And I'm going to make, oh, sorry, the, um, the, uh, it should also have a size. So I wonder actually if radius should actually be the size of the planet. And I should also have a variable called d, uh, which is, I'm going to call this a distance. I'm just going to make it longer winded. A distance. Distance, oh, losing steam, it's been a long day. Distance is the distance from the sun. Now, what's gonna, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do, by the way, is think of a generic model. Because I might have a bunch of planets that have a distance 
from the sun, but I might have other planets which are essentially like moons, which have a distance from their parents. So I might have this, have this like tree-like structure where some planets rotate around the sun, other planets rotate around the planets. So really this is just like a body. This is like a celestial body object. It's not really a planet object, but I'll just call it planet for simplicity. Okay, so back to here. So I'm gonna draw an ellipse at uh, zero, zero with it, the radius, which is not R, oops, radius times two. So let's just see. <laughs> Sorry, I'm anally retentively getting rid of all the extra space. Here's my planet object. A radius, an angle, a distance. A radius, a distance, an angle, and a show function which draws it. So what I want to do is create a planet. And I realize the sun is not a planet. And I'm going to say sun equals new planet. Its distance from anything else is just going to be zero because it's going to start in the center. And then I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, its size, that's what I need, it's going to be 100. And then I'm going to have sun dot show. And let's run this. And where is it? Now I have a feeling, <laughs> number one is I didn't give it, let's give it a color, fill 255. And what am I missing? Uh, oh, distance should be zero. Radius should be 100. There we go. Now notice where it is. It's in the top left. So I want my sun to be in the middle of the window. So I'm going to start by saying translate with divided by two, height divided by two. I've got a light that keeps going on and off up there. It's a little disorienting. Okay, so here we go. We're getting, so we're getting somewhere now. We've got the sun in the middle of the window as an object. So now, clearly I need more data structures to store the information about these planets. Where should those go? Well, I have an idea. You might think that ordinarily the next step that I would do would be to create a planet array, right? Because ultimately I want to have a lot of planets. But really this is my data structure. I have a sun and the sun might have three planets rotating around it. And this planet might have two moons rotating around it. This might have one moon, and that might have no moons. Well, each one of these is a planet object. So what are the properties of a planet object? The properties are, oh, dramatic moment ruined, <laughs> radius, angle, distance. Radius, the size, angle, where is it in its rotation, and distance. How far is it away? And also, children planets, things that are rotating around it. So the sun has three, this has two, this has one, this has zero. So each planet should, inside of itself, recursively, self-referentially, store a reference to an array of planets. Now, I'm going to be very simple about this and just say every single planet gets three, ah, okay, so I, 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 I got an idea, I got an idea, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's lots of ways we could approach this, but I think what might be useful right now is for me to write a function, and I'm gonna call it spawn moons. And <laughs> in the spawn moons function, I'm gonna create that array. So maybe I can create a certain number of moons. I can say planets equals a new planet array with some number of moons. And then for int i equals zero, i is less than planets dot length, i plus plus planets index i equals a new planet. And maybe each moon should be, you know, half the size of the planet. This is totally arbitrary. This could all be random and I figure out different ways of doing it. And then its distance should be some amount. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm also going to say uh, distance. Uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to say some amount like, uh, you know, I think maybe we could actually make this a, um, an argument here. Uh, uh, no, let me, let, me, let me try just doing something random for right now. <laughs> try doing something random right now. Random. You know, 100, 200. I, I got to figure out a, slight, a better way of thinking about that. So the, each 
And I, I kind of want to uh, put these as separate lines of code to make this easier to see. OK, so each, when a planet gets a bunch of moons, it runs through a loop and creates all of them with a smaller radius and some distance away from it. So what I want to do here now is say sun spawn moons, and I want to have five. So I make a sun and then immediately say spawn moons and have five of them. And we can just run this. There's no errors, but I'm not seeing anything. Why am I not seeing anything? Because when I show the planet, I also need to show, show its children moons. So, and remember those children moons, I should call them, I'm calling them planets, I'm calling them moons, whatever. Uh, the children should also, are just planet objects. So when I show this particular planet, I draw it as a circle, then I loop through and show it's, it's all of its subplanets. So let's see that. And okay, so we have an, a null pointer exception. Why do we have a null pointer exception? Let's think about this. Um, so what's null here? Let's, uh, let's print line planets. And actually, let's say print array. And so we've got to debug this here. OK, so it looks like the array has, oh, so why, uh, why did I get null uh, for, that's weird. Um, hold on. <laughs> 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What's planets.length? Oh, 5. What's null? I'm losing my mind here. Um, hmm, hmm. <laughs> this, part, this part might get edited out later. <laughs> uh, weird how I'm getting a null pointer exception, and yet it seems to be working. Like, hold on. No null pointer exception. Oh, okay, hold on. Sorry, everybody. Oh, the, oh, I'm sure. Okay, so that's working. Planets index i equals new planet. Something must be, spawn, is spawn moons not happening? Oh, I meant, uh, no, this seems right. This seems right. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, everyone. Let's see here. Let's make sure this is happening correctly. Print line planets, index i. Um, let's run this. All right? Five planet objects were generated, so those are not null. Oh, I know what happens. Oh my goodness, ah! So because of this whole recursive system I have, oh, of course, of course, there are people watching this live, or probably you've all been yelling at me for the last 30 seconds. Because of this recursive system I have, I say, hey, planet, show yourself, then show your children. Boom, boom, boom. And each of you children, show your children. And each of you children, show your children. Oh, you don't have any children? No pointer exception. So at some point, one of the planets will not, that array will be null. So I, I need to make sure that I check that. So all I need to do here is just essentially say if planets is not equal to null, meaning if this planet does have some moons, if it has some children, only then call show. So that's just a quick little check. Everything was right. I was creating things correctly, but I'm forgetting that the new planets I created also have arrays. OK, let's go and let's run this. Wonderful. So you can see, hmm, I see one circle and I see a bunch. Now, what am I missing? So what I'm missing is a crucial key step, which is that if I have the sun and I have a planet and it's supposed to be at a certain distance from the sun, the orbital distance, I need to use a function in processing called translate. But what translate will do will say, I drew the sun at this location, then translate out this far, and then draw the next planet. So I need to add, right, all, everything is only just being drawn at 0, 0. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Everything is only being drawn at 0, 0. So I need to add before this, translate by r, comma, 0. And I also want to rotate by some angle. OK? So I'm going to rotate by some angle which is, oh, and not by r, by distance, okay? So now if we run this, we should see here are the planets. <laughs> and let's do something to make things a little more visible here. Let's give the color some alpha so we can sort of see what's going on. Let's also think about how far these planets are from the 
a couple things. One is, let's make the, the sun quite a bit smaller. And let's make the planets, uh, you know, between uh, 75 and 150 in terms of distance. And you can see, now how come there's only two of them? Uh, uh, there should be five. Now, uh, let's think about why I'm not seeing five. Um, let's take a look at planets.length. Five. Okay, I think they're just, oh, I'm being silly because they're getting spawned off the screen. So <laughs> we're not seeing five. So let's, um, sorry about that. That seems kind of obvious to me now. So let's, let's just, you know, randomly put them between 75 and 100. This is, am I, did I do the distance? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> I, the next thing that I need to teach you guys about in terms of like the important concept is I completely forgot. So translations, doesn't matter what I do, translations are cumulative. <laughs> so I draw the sun, then I translate by 75, and I draw the next planet. Guess what? Let's say the next one got picked 85. What I want is to go back to the center of the planet, translate by 85, and draw the next the center of the sun, translate by the next one. But actually what I did was I translated by 75, then I translated by another 85, which I don't want to do. So this is where uh, object-oriented programming and push matrix and pop matrix come in. If in my object, if in the show function, I always put at the beginning of the show function push matrix, which is like a save, and at the end of the function, I put pop matrix, which is like a restore. This function becomes sort of its own thing, its own world. Whatever translations and rotations happen inside of here, they get undone the moment I say pop matrix. So whatever translations happen for this object, they don't affect any of the other objects. And you can see now that they're all, of course, bunched up right there because I kept trying to reduce the amount, where really what I want is for this to be between, like, like I said, 75 and 300. So now you can see I'm picking some random planets. Now, notice they're all along the x-axis. Why? Because my angle is always 0. Let's change that. Let's make an angle between, a random angle between 0 and 2 pi. <laughs> wait, wait a second here. What is going on? That should not have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look here. Uh, uh, angle, float angle. That's crazy. Why is it picking one angle for all of them? What did I do to deserve this? Strange result. Translate, then rotate by the angle. So let's hold on. Let's take a look at this angle. We don't need, we can, un, we can get rid of this print line planets.length. I have a feeling I've missed something rather obvious. So it's getting different angles for each one, but somehow the same angle is being used here. Do I have a, no? Okay, hold on. Let's just change the variable name to make sure I'm not losing my mind. What did I miss here, everybody? Uh, hmm. Okay, hold on. This is this is this is certainly confounding me here. I gotta have to figure this one out. Oh, translate by the distance, rotate by the angle. Oh, 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 oh. No, that's right. Oh, oh. Wait a sec. No, that's right. Uh, and then come back, translate by the distance, and rotate by the next angle. That seems to make sense. Um, hold on. Let's. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to say no loop, and I'm going to just make two. This is a good way to figure this out. So the loop is only running once, and then I'm going to take out this print line, and I'm going to, oh, guess what I did? <laughs> so important. Oh, these mistakes. I, I, I always make these mistakes. It's, oh my god. I'm rotating after I translate it, which is absolutely incorrect. In this case, I mean, you could be doing that, but let's think about this, right? What I want is, here's my sun. I want to, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm right now, my sort of registration point 
where the world is, my point of view is the center of the sun, and the angle is zero. So what I did is I translated out, and then I rotated, which was meaningless, and those things were actually appearing at a different angle only because the sun also had its own rotation. But what I want to do is not that. What I want to do is the following. I first want to rotate, and then I want to translate out. And then I'm going to go back and rotate again and translate out to get them in different spots. So the order of this stuff is so unbelievably important. And I made a classic error. I want to pretend that I did it on purpose, but I did not. So I'm going to put that there. I can get rid of all my print lines, and I can run this again. And we can see, there we go. And there's only two, so let's go back and give me uh, five again, and let's get rid of no loop, and let's run it. And we can see, OK, we've got our solar system. We've got five planets and uh, one sun. Now, we should also add a function. Uh, I'm going to add a function called orbit. And in this function, I'm going to say angle equals angle plus uh, orbit speed, right? Because I want the angle to change so that they rotate around. And I, I, I'm going to uh, replace theta with angle everywhere to just use angle. And then I also need another variable, orbit speed, which I am going to make random. Orbit speed equals random, uh, some speed between 0.1 and, you know, 0.3 or something like that. And now let's run this. Okay, angle, uh, orbit, uh, let's, let's use the camel casing. Oops, ah, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just have to be consistent. Everything is case sensitive. So now, oops, float, a float distance. Okay, and now I also need to add in, ooh, interesting. So if I say sun.orbit, I'm asking the sun to orbit, but what does it mean for the sun to orbit? Well, it needs to do this, but also, and why is angle now not knowing what it is? Oops, I lost angle. Sorry, everybody. Angle. Um, and now, uh, uh, what do I need to do here? Whenever the sun orbits, ah, oh, come on. Uh, un like the, my keyboard is going crazy. Um, whenever the sun, just like when I show the sun, I have to show all of its children. When I orbit a planet, I need to say, uh, as long as there are planets, right, I need this if planet is not null, then I want planets index i dot orbit. I want all the children planets to orbit as well. <laughs> I don't have the timer. OK, we can see this. something crazy is going. OK, so let's think about this. So first of all, they're all kind of spitting out of control. So something has got to be wrong here. Let's look at, um, I've got push matrix and pop matrix, which would lead me to believe, oh, so one issue is that I have the sun spinning as well. And I don't want the sun to spin. So I just want the other things to spin. So, and I, I, things are spinning kind of quickly. So the issue is I, I really should make the sun probably as this like sta static object a completely separate thing. But I can, what I'm going to do is um, add a v argument here, which means that I can, uh, I can set the orbit speed. And when I make the sun, I'm going to set the orbit speed to zero. And when I make the other planets, I'm going to pick a random orbit speed. And now, that should fix it. There we go. So we can see, look, everything is rotating. And that, those speeds are quite fast. So let's, let's, be, let's pick you know, much smaller random numbers. And you can see, OK, so now we have a bunch of circles all spinning around the center circle. Pretty good. They could have different sizes. They could be more. We could do more variety with the speed, but we're getting somewhere. Now, to really make this magical, right? Nothing that I've done here so right now is the two things that I want to do to make this magical is number one, have planets have planets have planets. And number two, make this happen in 3D. So let's see if we can, if you still got some, pause this video, go outside, take a walk. I don't know. Then come back if you want to watch it more, but I'm going to keep going with this. Okay, here we go. So the first thing that I need to do is say that, hmm. When I spawn moons, what I want to do is have my planets also spawn moons. So if I were to write this, 
Um, uh, so if I were to write like this, for example, so the sun gets made and the sun spawns a moon. Then I make new planets, and each of those planets spawn their own moons. And so each object has an array of other objects, an array of other objects. So while this would work, this would result in an infinite forever loop. Because every planet would make five more planets, which would make five more planets, which would make five more planets, which would make five more planets. So I need some way of having an exit strategy. Here's a way that I propose, which is really dangerous, actually. I probably shouldn't do this. Is, um, well, first thing I'll do is just, um, I'm trying to think of a good way, of, a good way of, there's a bunch of different ways I could approach this. I could keep track of levels. So I could say like, okay, well after I've spawned, like after I'm on the fifth <laughs> orbiting planet, forget about it. I could also right now just like only do like the sun with some planets and those planets have moons. Like I don't need those moons to have moons. <laughs> but I also could sort of like randomly decide if planets get moons or not. And I would by chance eventually have this stop. Let's do the levels thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second variable, spawn moon zero, meaning I'm at level zero. So I'm going to add an argument called level. This is going to be useful too, because level is going to help us determine the size and speed of these maybe. And then I'm going to say level minus one. So when I spawn the moons, oh no, plus one. So the sun will, the sun will call spawn moons with zero. And then it'll make a bunch of planets that will call spawn moons with one. And they'll make a bunch of planets. I've been doing this for a half an hour, I guess. Um, they, will, um, they will spawn a bunch of planets with level two and so on and so forth. So I only want to do this if level is less than two. So let's actually only do this if level is less than one. See what happens. Whoa! <laughs> level is less than zero. Yeah. That's interesting. So why did it even do it? Oh, right, because I'm already spawning one. So this is if level is less than zero, I'm getting these five planets. And if level is less than one, whoops, whoops, level is less than one, all of those planets have things orbiting it. Now, this is totally out of control because the distances and the sizes are all over the place. So what I want to do probably is figure out, number one is uh, figure out the number of moons they should have. And I'll, maybe I'll make that random. And it's going to be between zero and two and, and four. And so it's going to have that many. So number one, this right now you're going to see there's a lot fewer things, right? And also the distance, like, the submoons should be much closer to those. So I can use this level variable quite effectively. So um, level, hmm. So I'm picking random distances, and what I could do is divide by level. So first of all, <laughs> I'm going to make the level 1. <laughs> Start with 1, because I don't ever want to divide by 0. And I'm going to have the distance be uh, divided by level. And also, the radius, I'm already multiplying uh, times 0.5, so I could also, whoops, I could also say divided by level. And, uh, and that way, um, and that way this should now be 2. And you can see here, now look what's going on here. It's sort of hard to see because I don't have like a good sense of sizes. So I guess divided by level, I started with 1. So I should say divided by level <laughs> times 2. There we go. So you can kind of see here, if I zoom in, what's going on. This particular planet has its own thing orbiting around it as it orbits. By the way, they all only orbit in one direction. <laughs> Not the band One Direction. Insert One Direction song right now. That orbital speed, I really should pick, where do I, where do I pick the orbital speed? Right here. I should really pick some value also, that could be negative so that they could rotate, the, spin the opposite direction. So you can see now, and it's sort of hard to tell what's spinning around what, but you can massage the values and stuff yourself. Play this, because I got to move to 3D, but I at least want to see that I could have another level here. And can we find it? Um, I think I've shrunk stuff too much. So let me at least, 
see if I can get you, um, let's make things generally just quite a bit closer. And also, let's not have the size um, be that radically different. So you can see here the multiple levels of moons. I'm going to try to zoom in here. Um, so you can see the multiple levels of this thing rotating around that thing with that thing rotating around that thing. And I could even add one more level if I wanted to be so crazy, like four. And I'll let you enjoy this on your own to try to see like everything rotating around everything. Now, okay, so I would encourage you to take this, add some color, think about the distances, the values, the ratios, all of that much more thoughtfully. But this idea of nesting systems is kind of interesting to play with. Let's at least see if we can move this to 3D.